Recent evidence might suggest that a new model of the Nintendo Switch could be on the way to stores near you within the next year. What evidence is that exactly and how credible is that evidence? Is it actually even possible that a new model of the Switch could be on the way? And if it is, why would that be a horrible idea? Well, on this episode of Wood News, we're going to talk about all of those things. Ow, something just got in my eye. Also, I made up Wood News just then. So last month, the Switch had a firmware update 5.0. And with that came just a ton of theories that Nintendo might be planning a new model of the Switch in some capacity. Diving into the files of that update and without talking about all the mumbo jumbo that you guys won't understand that I didn't really understand either, it seems like Nintendo has plans to upgrade the Switch's CPU to the T. 214, a step up from the current T210. And obviously the first thing you want to think of when you think of a better processor or a, or a new processor that's technically an upgrade is faster, better, smoother processing. Your mind instantly wants to go to, oh my games, maybe they'll run at 60 FPS handheld mode. Maybe everything will be 1080p instead of 720. But even best case scenario, theories aside, that ain't gonna be the case. So without getting too ahead of ourselves, let's talk about what this could mean, what this upgrade could actually mean, why Nintendo is doing it. And something else I wanna talk about, and kind of my main point of the video, is as soon as this got out there, as soon as people found out Nintendo was maybe releasing a new model, when there's a slight upgrade like this, it's, oh, new Nintendo Switch model, because that's what's gonna get you the clicks, right? And when that started circulating, suddenly a lot of people seem to want a new Switch model. But in my opinion, that would be a terrible idea right now. So I wanna talk about all of those things. To start with, this new CPU upgrade, what it most likely points towards, all the signs are purely for a security reason purpose. Nintendo wants to upgrade the CPU because this new one is harder to hack. Nintendo is throwing loads of money into actual hackers and trying to get them to hack the Switch so they can find out how it's hackable, how exactly people can hack it, and then ways to prevent that. So if they're willing to put that much money into something like that, it stands to reason that if they found a way, an affordable way to actually make it less hackable, and that way was a slightly upgraded CPU that's harder to hack, they would definitely roll those out. And that doesn't necessarily mean that with that comes a new Switch, with that comes a new name, a new Nintendo Switch or a Switch XL or anything other than, than just putting a new CPU on it. In fact, you could just ship that out with a new CPU and not even say anything or change anything. You wouldn't really need to. Just a different serial number to signify, hey, this is a new run of the system and there is a slight upgrade in it of some kind, but nothing worth notifying anyone. And I think that's most likely what this is going to be. This exact instance of a new CPU upgrade, that's what this is most likely going to be, not a new model. Does that mean we won't see a new model at some point? And this is something I find very interesting because around about the same time the Switch was launched and that realization started to hit me and a lot of other people that this was the hybrid console. It was the new 3DS and the new Wii U. It was the home console and it was the portable console. And when you think about Nintendo and the way they do their business, you think about their handhelds, they love their variations. They love mixing it up all the way back to the Game Boy. You had the Game Boy Mini, you had Game Boy Micro. The DS had a couple of revisions, ended up looking completely different. The model that we all knew and loved by the end of the DS lifespan looked completely different to that weird bumpy one that it started with. That one almost looked like a completely outdated system when it did essentially the same thing. And even moving into the 3DS without reaching over there and grabbing all of them, how many different kinds of 3DSs kept coming out? We even got a brand new one within the last year, the 2DS XL. So even right up until this point, Nintendo still loves their variations. They still love doing their alternate systems. They're always a different marketing ploy 
to resell the system to either different people or sometimes the same people depending on which system it is. And it works and Nintendo knows it works because the 3DS sold amazingly. Almost everyone seems to have a 3DS and almost all of those people seem to have a couple variations of the 3DS. But then you think about Nintendo's home console mindset. The NES and the SNES both had minis. That was a long time ago. The N64 stayed pretty true. But then the GameCube stayed true, the Wii stayed true, there was a Wii Mini right at the end of its lifespan, the same year the Wii U came out. So it wasn't something Nintendo did while the system was hot, while the system was in its, its bulk before they moved on, because it's a cheaper, more affordable system for them to make and for people to buy. And then the Wii U, which obviously they didn't mess with because they probably couldn't afford to mess with it. Probably no way they could have made that any cheaper, and if they could have, would people even buy it anyway? Would it be worth their time? And in, in a strange strange way they did bring out a Wii U 2 and that is the Switch. If you were to bring out a Wii U 2, if you were to, to keep, if the Wii U was successful, if it was a successful system and it sold millions and millions of systems like the Switch did and the Wii did and they wanted to continue that after five years, they could have made a Wii U 2 and how would that be changed? How would that be different? You got to imagine it would be just the portable side of it and that you could you could just remove that middleman, cut down in cost because you don't have the console and the tablet, just smash it into one and that's the Wii U 2. Well, that's the Switch. They just rebranded, renamed, and here we are. But still, they don't really mess with their home systems like they do their handhelds. So is Switch the home console or is it the handheld? Which one is it? It's both. So which direction are they going to go in? It's kind of more of a handheld, but a lot of people play it as a home console. I don't know if they're going to have that 3DS mindset of let's improve it, make it better, XL, increase the screen size, any of that, or if they're going to stick the way it is. But all I know is whatever they do, they cannot do it right now. And I would say don't mess with it until at least 2020. Nintendo has already indicated they want the Switch to last longer than the standard five or six years of a console. And according to the Wall Street Journal sources, they plan to achieve that by waiting longer than usual for a hardware update. I think that right there says it in itself. We ain't gonna get a new model anytime soon. The Nintendo wants to wait and that that is what needs to happen. So if you were hoping and praying that you were gonna get a new Switch model, or if you don't have a Switch and you're waiting for one, maybe an announcement at E3 or something like that, I hate to burst your bubble, but it ain't gonna happen. I think it's important that we get that out there and talk about why. The most obvious one to me is the whole early adopter standpoint. The Wii U was a struggle. It didn't sell very well. Nintendo had a hard time getting people to back it. The Wii sold incredibly well, but it was a home family system that a lot of mums bought and grandmas and grandpas bought and they did the bowling and all of that. It wasn't really a place for hardcore gamers and they lost a lot of their fans around that time to PlayStation, Xbox, and maybe even PC. Who knows what that's like. So the Switch is the first time in a long time they've pulled back a lot of their audience. They've regained a lot of trust and it led to a load of people jumping on board early buying the system on launch and having it sold out for too damn long. Having the system sell 14, 15 million in its first year and who knows what it's at right now. They worked hard with the games and the marketing and the planning and the strategy that went into all of it amounting to the system finally being a success. You can't then go and say, hey guys, Thanks for all the support. Thanks for jumping on early, making the system as great as it is. We're really money hungry though. So here's a brand new system, a year and a half after launch. We're announcing it now at E3. It'll be out by Christmas, another $300, but you have that 128 gig storage space you wanted. The screen is half an inch bigger. It has a slightly better CPU and you probably won't notice a difference in the games, just like with the 3DS, the new 3DS when it could handle games better, but you didn't really see a difference and we were going to make games exclusively for it but it only had about two good ones oh and it's also $350 but don't worry that initial version of the switch that we brought out we're dropping that to 250 so if you did buy that sucks to be you because now it's cheaper and we have a better one I think that would really sting and, and it would suck and, and me me, even as a, 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 a switch lover who would clearly go out and buy that system on launch as well I would be a little bit salty about it. Like I really have to go out and spend another few hundred dollars 
within you know, a year or two of having this system for something that's it's not going to be like Xbox One X where now you can play games in 4K and maybe you can consider that worth the upgrade because you have a 4K TV and you want to try that new experience. It's not going to be that different. Seriously, unless unless you tell me every game's running at 1080 now and 60 frames even in handheld mode, which ain't going to happen this soon, no matter what, without an insane price point, it's just not going to be worth it. It's just going to suck. If they felt the need to do one, if they just had to put one out this soon, here are the things I think are feasibly achievable right now. More storage space. It's never really bothered me. You throw one SD card in there with 130 gigs, 128 gigs, and you're good. I mean, I buy a lot of damn Switch games. Granted, I cycle through them, I delete some of the old ones, but I've never had an issue with the space. But that is an issue a lot of people have, and it would be nice, it's always nice to have more. As well as that better CPU, you would need more RAM, I think. That, that, that's where it's really going to hit home and make the system faster. I mean, I don't know all that much about computers, handhelds, laptops, all of that. What I do know is, the Switch has four gigs of RAM. It very almost had two gigs of RAM, but I think it was Capcom that said one of their games wouldn't run on the system at two gigs, recommend making it four. So last second, Nintendo made it four. Fun little tidbit I thought I'd throw in here, so I hope it's correct. Eight would be so much better. If you could double that with a better CPU, that's when a lot of the games we already have on the Switch could feasibly be bumped up to 60 and 1080, or at least 1080 and 30 frames. A lot of these games that are right now are 720 and 30 frames, could be 720 and 60 or 1080 and 30. With 8 gigs and a better CPU, I see that being possible. And who knows, people like Panic Button are working miracles on the current system. I've seen the gameplay for Wolfenstein, I don't know how they've made that look so good and run so well. Imagine what they could do with twice the RAM. Biggest screen, I think. We have these big thick black bars around the edge of the Switch, and I'm sure there's a reason for that. All I'm saying is, kill those black borders and bring the screen right out to the edge. You know what made a lot of the newer TVs look really classy and really nice? Getting rid of the border. So if you get rid of the border on this bad boy, it's going to look a lot cleaner, a lot nicer, and you'd have a bigger screen. New attachments, that's something that needs to happen regardless, I think. And then maybe upgraded Joy-Cons, maybe a Joy-Con with an actual D-pad licensed by Nintendo, or just, this could be a completely separate thing too, but you have a system with removable Joy-Cons. It's time, it's time to add on some extra peripheries, peripherals, that you stick onto the side. You, it, it's so perfect. Ever since launch, people were making concept art of all these different weird and wacky Joy-Cons you could have had. But there are so many options there, all the different layouts, different buttons, different themes. The possibilities could be endless. But that's not a new Switch model, that's just me going off on a tangent like I do in my videos. But all of that, as exciting as some of that is, in the grand scheme of things, they're all little niceties, things that aren't necessary that you'd have to spend another $300 to get, if not more. If it came out now or in the next year, it's gonna screw over those early adopters. It's gonna leave people in an awkward position. You're just gonna leave everyone that bought the Switch in the first year with that feeling of, do I go out and buy this system or do I have this one that's not as superior anymore, that's kind of outdated? You outdate your own system. The system you've got everyone hyped up for, everyone loves, everyone's finally on board with the Nintendo system and they love the Switch. And now they're looking at it like it's the old one. It's too soon for that. And I know Nintendo knows that, that, that Wall Street Journal article thingy clearly indicated towards Nintendo knowing that. If you wait until 2020, I think that's around the sweet spot to do something like that because you're over halfway into a usual system's lifespan. If Nintendo does want to extend the lifespan of the Switch further than usual, then you're going to want to kickstart it a little bit halfway, over halfway through a normal system's lifespan. And three years is enough time for the early adopters to feel like they got three years worth out of a system. You know, you've had this thing for three years of your life now. You've had a ton of fun on it. You've played a ton of games on it. A new version's coming out. You could have all the things I just listed, but who knows what else is capable three years from now. Technology moves so fast. Three years from now, you could put out a new system that's so much more advanced, be capable of so much more. And with all the games that come out from now until then, who knows what we might want at that point out of a Switch? Who knows what we might need at that point out of a Switch? There could be so many other things that would make sense then that right now don't make too much sense. 
And at that point, two, three years in, maybe there were people that were like, I'd buy a Switch, but it doesn't have enough storage space. Maybe a new model with that feature and a ton of other features. Maybe those things are what people were waiting for. So they'll buy that. Or maybe someone was waiting for a price drop. Suddenly, a few years in, you're actually boosting the sales up again without upsetting anyone. It's fun to be excited to get ahead of ourselves to want something new and something fresh or even just see that something new is coming but a new switch model would not help right now it would not be a good idea and at its best at its best it would be a very slight upgrade that you're gonna have to spend another few hundred dollars on now is just not the time a few years from now though that's when a new Switch model could actually be really cool and feel like an impressive upgrade. But maybe I'm wrong. If you disagree or you have your own opinions, let me know down below what you think. Do you want a Switch model right now ASAP or do you think it'd be better if they waited? Or do you think there should never be one at all? Let's have a discussion down in those comments. Like this video and subscribe because we become best friends. Let me know if you like me doing videos like this or the virtual console video. The reason I don't make too many of them is because when I make a video like this, I, it's just me talking. There isn't so that I can throw articles at you, I can put some things up on the screen, but for the most part, there isn't much I can edit. There isn't much I can make flashy. I like making things flashy. I like making the list videos because all it is is me, gameplay, me, gameplay, me, funny joke, gameplay, and it's, it's just, there's a rhythm to it, and it's exciting, I feel like. But if you like this, and these videos do well, then let me know, because I will do more of them. That's all I'm trying to say. It's like a weird apology, but also, uh, hey, I'll do more if you like them. Thanks again to the Patreons. I hate to love you and leave you, but I'm gonna anyway.